So you're a fast-paced, aggressive solo duo who wants to get your bass down quickly and then run through the server, guns a-blazing. You're a machine. You never sleep. You control your grid. You're just waiting for that next online raid. And you'll be ready for it. Inside the Insomniac. The Insomniac is the most feature-rich and defendable solo duo base I've built to date. It has everything you've come to expect from a modern base design crammed into the most compact possible package. Where do we begin? The base has four disconnectable TCs, a spacious and well-protected compound, a fully covered inner shell with tons of drop storage, two floors of hyper-efficient loot space, multiple mobility shoes to quickly traverse the base, stable and sneaky inner peak downs, a dedicated bedroom, the best solo wide gap shooting floor I've ever built, a spacious turret covered roof with multiple battlements, and a fully functional open core with a ton of storage, auto turret coverage, and even open core peak downs. All of this packed into a tiny ring 2x1 footprint. The numbers on screen take into account every single endgame upgrade, including double and single armored doors and a full sheet metal shell. So prior to making these expensive upgrades, you can expect a base to cost even less than what you see here, making it a perfect choice for a dedicated solo or duo. Let's take a tour of the base. Really quick before the tour. This base was built live over at twitch.tv slash templetaps. I owe a massive thank you to the numerous members of our community that made significant contributions to the end product. This base was basically built by all of us. Make sure you stop by next time I'm live if you want to get in on the action. Also, if you like free stuff, entering competitions, or just hanging out with some really cool cats, get in the Discord already. Anyway, here's a tour. Starting at our mini Satori disconnectable external TC, we see that even if our main TC is destroyed during a raid, our base cannot be griefed unless 24 additional rockets are spent to destroy our externals. If we want to replace our main TC, all we have to do is disconnect the externals with this twig buildup, and then reconnect them afterwards just as easily like so. Jumping up inside our gatehouse, we see that vertical metal embrasures allow us to fight out of or back into our compound in the event of an online raid. Heading inside the compound, we see 360 degree auto turret coverage and prime real estate for large furnaces, mixing tables, refineries, or any other deployables you might need. Heading inside our shell airlock, we see that we get a ton of visibility into our compound and, turning back around inside, we have 360 degree auto turret coverage inside of the defense ring, which is also littered with utility and storage. The shell is incredibly easy to traverse, and positioned on neither side are quick access chutes that allow us to move easily between the top and the bottom of the base. Heading into our first floor loot room, we have spaces for two bags, a locker, our tier 3 bench, a ton of storage, and of course, our TC. Jumping up the second floor reveals a plethora of hyper-efficient additional storage on both sides, and three furnaces on top of a triangle floor tile. Jumping up again brings us to the third floor where we have even more storage and our dedicated solo bedroom. The bedroom opens up into our inner peaks, which are extremely easy to move around through and provide tight, clear angles into the shell to defend your base. We can easily drop down to retrieve kits from fallen raiders and hop back up as well. Heading up through our floor stack ladder hatch brings us to the open core. Here we see a massive 16 box loot room with full auto turret coverage and space for multiple batteries, utility items, or whatever else you might need. Heading out either side of the open core leads to the full 360 degree wide gap shooting floor which has absolutely insane coverage across the entire compound and deep outside. Not a single floor tile is wasted, with efficient peaks across every single edge. Finally, we jump up to our roof access, which also doubles as a peak down into our open core and up onto our roof as well for discouraging top-down raids. There's a drone accessible vending machine for selling your extra goods, and our roof is well covered by auto turrets and hosts a variety of additional angles down and around the compound. 
and that pretty much makes up the base. Now that you've seen it, let's learn how to build it. A quick disclaimer, this is not a beginner friendly build. If this is your first time building a larger base, I highly recommend you choose one of my other Solo Duo Trio designs instead. We're going to start the base off by creating our floor stack footprint. This base is floor stacked however it uses the easiest possible method and anybody can do it. Place down two foundations like so, and a ramp. Identify the twig space roughly about halfway through that has a warped shape like this. We're going to take a small box and place it directly above the warped shape and then hold the W key down until we're mashed up against it. Then turn 90 degrees to the right so we're facing outwards from the foundation and prepare a triangle foundation like so. Place it somewhat parallel with the other foundations and then strafe until you can mash up another triangle right next to it like so. If done correctly, you should easily be able to create two walls with different heights and then you can test it by placing floor tiles on both. If everything worked out, you should be able to stack the floors like this. Get rid of all that once you've verified that it's correct and come around to this side. Place a triangle on the lower foundation like so and then place three foundations to the right across it. And that's your footprint. You can wall in a starter now and place a TC inside which will help in demolishing the stuff we don't need. Seal up the base so the TC is protected and then come outside. You're going to demolish this square foundation both of these triangle foundations, and the outer walls. The only foundation we keep is this one, which creates the basis for our floor stack. All of the hard part is done now. Upgrade everything beyond twigs so that nobody grease it. Inside this one by one, we can keep our early game deployables, but we'll want to expand as soon as possible so that we don't get full deeped through one door. To this end, enclose this space with a single door on the front. We're not going to close off the roof though, we're going to create a classic half shelf elevator. We don't actually have to fill out the half shelf now, but we should enclose it like so and put a double door on the top. We now have an extremely small makeshift roof access. We can utilize it by placing a furnace in the corner like so or our workbench, it's really up to you. Eventually, the floor stack triangle that we'll be using to create our shell will start to decay. In order to prevent this, all you have to do is connect it to the main base with a frame like so. Because this is an intermediate level 2x1 build, I'm not going to carefully go over the steps of how to fill out a 2x1 loot room, but most of you should be familiar with this by now. If you need a careful and precise step-by-step -step guide on how to fill out a 2x1 loot room, most of my 2x1 builds have that, so just check back on one of my older videos. If you have any variations that you want in the configuration of the loot room, that's totally fine. There's only a few things that are absolutely mandatory. First, the workbench has to go in this position. And second, there can't be any deployables blocking the middle of the bag room. This is because we're going to use the space to jump up to the second floor. Before we go any farther in the build, I'm going to start upgrading everything to its final grade of materials. In game, you'll have to upgrade everything as materials become available, but every tile in the entire build is reachable at any given time, so you don't have to worry about missing something or upgrading in the wrong order. Just do everything as the materials come in. This floor tile can be sheet or HQM, it's really only going to affect stability during a raid. Now before we can create the outer shell, we have to expand up one floor. Replace this sheet metal double door with a garage door, and then we can get started on some various buildups that will create our high efficiency second floor loot room. Surround the second floor in walls like so, and be sure to upgrade it all to armored at the end game of your build. Create a triangle buildup outside like so out of twig so that we can create a triangle platform here for maximum efficiency. Above the space we're going to create a classic half shelf jump up. And in this build I prefer a lot of the garage doors to be facing the inside of the loot rooms because it'll make mobility easier later. Now inside here as soon as you need more storage you can go ahead and place this triangle floor frame. Upgrade it to sheet metal and then turn around. You can easily fit a large box on the tip just hanging over top of the single armored door. This makes for great drop storage and doesn't obstruct movement at all. In the back left corner here, in similar fashion we can place one small box. Technically you can place more but it makes mobility a lot worse, these two do not affect it at all. Oh yeah, I said single armored door right? That's because you should upgrade this to a single armored door eventually. That should be pretty self explanatory though from the tour.
Once you need more storage, we can turn this hyper-efficient loot room here with the jump up into a half-shelf loot room as well. Once again, here we're using the exact same half-shelf loot room design that I use in every single one of my 2x1 builds. If you're not familiar with it, you can slow this down or consult any of my other videos. Turning around, three furnaces can be placed along the back of the triangle floor tile that's facing inside of the base. Now we can jump underneath of the floor tile and create a similar half-shelf loot room here. There is going to be one noticeable difference though, as we need to leave a few of the items out so that we can still access the next floor. When you reach this point, you can do one barbecue in one small box, but only on the side that the jump up is not. If we place it on both sides, we wouldn't be able to get up and down anymore. See this gap here? We need it to go up and down. Finally, we can create one more half-shelf loot room here. The last room we can fill out before we build our shell and ultimately our open core is the bedroom. We do so by creating a double armored door facing outwards like this and leaving the roof open. This is very important. Obviously when you're building this base live, you're not going to want to fill out the bedroom until it's fully sealed in. But for demonstration purposes, I'm going to fill it out now. In order to seal this bedroom in, and then eventually build our open core and our shooting floor, we have to create our shell. Come outside to this triangle foundation and place a square, two triangles, a square, and four triangles. From here, we're just gonna recreate the shape on the other side exactly how we did it this way. Triangle, triangle, square, four triangles. There you go. Now we just gotta get it on the other side as well. So mirror the shape. Square, triangle, triangle, square, triangle, triangle, square. Now we don't actually need any of the foundations that are on the outside, so you can demolish them afterwards. Once all of the outer foundations have been demolished, place the final triangle reconnecting to the inside and get rid of the square. Now you can reconnect this side in the same way you did the first time with a wall frame, and eventually it should look like this and upgrade it to sheet metal. Now we can start building the shell out. None of these foundations are connected, so they will be decaying until we place the walls, but we can do that pretty soon. Come out to the long side and put a garage door on the right and a single door on the left. We use armored single doors on the inside and sheet ones on the outside, and then both sides get windows on the outer edges, just like this. Close both triangles off, and then we can build up the rest of the shell. It's just sheet metal walls all the way around up all three floors. Once the shell is up, we can actually seal in the entire base because of the floor stacking mechanic. Come up to the shell and make sure that you're targeting the shell sockets, not the main base. This will allow you to create an egg footprint like so. Leave the triangle over top of the bedroom empty and then place a triangle floor frame. And now with the magic of our floor stack, we can place a triangle ladder hatch inside of this square. Now that the entire base is sealed in, we can work on filling in the inner peaks so that they're actually usable during an early game raid. On these foundations, we can place a research table on one side and a repair bench on the other side. On both of our airlock foundations, we're going to place auto turrets like this to provide 360 degree coverage around the ring. Above each of the two sides, you're going to want to place a ladder as far down as possible above the deployables, and then we can work on the chutes that'll sit above them. Start with your inner peak downs by putting a triangle on either side here out of sheet metal and the floor frame as well. This is important for stability. A triangle ladder hatch opens down and that gives us our mobility chutes on either side. On the long end of the 2x1, you're going to want to create a triangle straight off of the main base like so, and then we can fill in all of the gaps with the floor stack portion. So you want to target the shell, not the main base, just like so on both sides to create our final gap. Repeat this on every corner. Triangle here, triangle here, triangle here, triangle here. All of these come off of the shell, not the main base. And there you go. There's a little room on the ends of the inner peaks for deployables, although you can't fit much. 
And down on the ground in the shell, you can basically deploy whatever you want. Mixing tables, large, small boxes, additional bags, whatever. Once the shell is filled out, it should be extremely easy to move across. In order to compound in the base, we're going to have to create our wide gap footprints. Let's start with the wide side of the base here. Build out your wide gap footprint by starting with three squares and a triangle from the side of the base. Demolish everything except the triangle, and then build back in with four more triangles. Remove everything except the last triangle, and then build a square on each side of it. Then create a triangle off of each side of those, and demolish one of the two sides. Just the square, like so. Off of the other one, place an additional square, and then place a triangle off of that. Then you can get rid of both of the squares. Finally, place one more triangle to the right of the last one you place, and remove it. Connect these two foundations together so they don't decay ultimately with two wall frames along the sides like so. And then you can build up the wall frames for the actual wide gap itself whenever you choose to build up the shooting floor. The center wall frames can be left stone, however the foundations and wall frames on the left and right should be eventually upgraded to sheet metal for stability. On the end here, we're going to create a window that allows us to see outside the compound, and we can use a twig build up on either side of this triangle to place a barricade on top of it like so. Eventually, auto turrets will go on these foundations as well to protect the compound. We'll speed run this one more time so you can see it in its entirety. But really, it isn't as difficult as it looks. I know this is probably pretty intimidating for intermediate level players who don't build wide gaps very often, but trust me, just slow down, take your time, and remember that you can do the entire thing out of twig, so you're not risking any materials. Keep in mind that none of this is actually upkept yet because it doesn't connect to the main base. This is where our external disconnectable TCs come in. Not only will they upkeep the bulk of our shooting floor, but they'll also protect our base from getting griefed by providing overlapping build privilege. I'm going to build these with symmetry because they're relatively simple. It's four triangles off of the window room here, and then a square at the end. Just like that. Off of the end of the square, we're going to build two more triangles and upgrade the inner one to sheet metal. This is where our mini Satori disconnectable TC will go. It's important that those two walls on the left are half walls, not a full wall like they are on the right. This is what allows us to disconnect it. Window it in, and then build a second window room just next to it out of stone. Now you can get rid of all of the foundations, and just follow the same footprint on top with frames. This is how we'll connect it. Eventually you're going to want all of these floor frames, the window frame itself, and the foundation underneath of it all to be sheet metal so that it costs a minimum of 6 rockets to destroy the TC or disconnect it. With 4 external TCs total, this will mean an additional 24 rockets just to take over the base. If your main TC is destroyed, place this twig foundation like so and the ramp to disconnect the external so you can replace the main TC. Once the main TC is replaced, rebuild the external like so. Now let's do some more wide gapping and some more externals on the short sides. Place a triangle here and a square to the right of it with another triangle on the left of the square. Then remove those two and build three squares off of the triangle with a triangle on the opposite end. Remove everything except the last triangle and then build back with five more triangles. Then a square goes on the end. This is what it should look like. From that square, on the left side of it, place one more triangle foundation. And then you can remove everything except that. Once you're here, you're going to just place one on the left here and mirror that shape on the other side. Place wall frames immediately on the left and right of these triangles and one down the center. It's important that all three are there. Place a square here and a triangle here and remove the square. Remove the two triangles in the middle and that's the ending footprint for the wide gap. Connect it to the foundation with one more frame like this and then build our gatehouse. Our gatehouse is a standard gatehouse that you see in most of my videos, with windows on either side and doors down the middle. Make sure that all of the soft sides face inside of the base. Fill each of the window frames with vertical metal embrasures, and then use triangle floor tiles like so to aid in the placement of the two barricades on top. 
Eventually, you're going to want to build your wide gap frames up, and all of these ones are going to be sheet metal on both sides. In identical fashion to the way we did it on the first wide gaps, the second wide gaps will also have mini Satori disconnectable external TCs. It's exactly the same, so I'll fast forward through it. Now we can compound in the base, put our large furnaces down, and then finish our open core and our shooting floor. Identify where the window is and stand next to the gatehouse. Place the wall so that it's touching the side of the gatehouse and the edge of the wall is facing the visibility window, like this. Then come over to the visibility window and do the same thing with the wall facing back towards the first wall you placed. Just like that. If done correctly, the third one should fit naturally in the middle. Remember to hold ALT and check where the wall is facing before you place it so you don't mess it up. Right on the gatehouse, facing towards the visibility window, and keep repositioning until it looks right. Then on the other side, place it up against the visibility window, and then ALT look until you verify that the wall is facing the first wall. Then get in the middle, place the last one. Large furnaces fit easily in the corners of the compound before or after the walls are down, so you don't have to worry about preventing your shooting floor from being placed as long as you place the furnaces in roughly these locations. Now we can build our open core loot room and then finish off the base with the wide gaps and the roof battlements. Come on top of your roof here and place a wall frame on the right side of the short ends. Everything else around it becomes a sheet metal wall like so to enclose this space. This is what it should look like. Come down to the left side of the wall frame and create this buildup to place a half triangle shelf next to the wall frame. Then destroy the buildup. On top of the triangle, place a window frame with the soft side facing inside of the open core. Then place a wall frame on the other side. A triangle floor frame goes here to create our roof peak up gap. And then we place a full wall on top and a roof like so. Now you can close in the entire open core like this and upgrade it to sheet metal whenever necessary. Inside the open core, we can place a garage door here and a double armored door opening out of the open core like this. At this point, we can finish up our roof access by placing a doorway here with a vending machine inside. If you don't intend on using vending machines, a stone wall is fine instead. Place a double door opening outwards or a garage door. The preference is up to you if you want the additional rocket of protection versus the additional speed from opening the double door. Then you can complete this turret pod like so. Now we can outfit our open core. Depending on how many additional turrets you want to use, you'll either need one or two large batteries here. If you're only going to use one large battery, you can place a workbench in the opposite triangle. Create a compartment for your battery like so and seal it in with an armored window. On the opposite end, just place a wall and then take your tier 3 bench and flush it up like so. Now we can actually build out the loot room. It's extremely simple. We just place a salvage shelf in each of the square tiles. Make sure that they're closer towards the center of the base, not the outside, otherwise the large boxes could prevent movement through the open core. The box positioning here should be pretty self-explanatory, it's just four boxes on every single salvage shelf. The exact position of the boxes doesn't matter that much, but you do want to try and build closer towards the bench and the battery so that the boxes don't block you from moving in and out of the open core. Now that we're finished with our open core, we can move on to our shooting floor. The first thing we need to do is come to either side of the bow tie wide gap here and place a square foundation. Then build your way up with sheet metal frames. Now I know I said that everything needed to be sheet metal here, but technically, like you saw on the tour, one of the three rows can be stone on the inside, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just going to make it all sheet. Now you can start building off the frames. Every single frame is going to support a wide gap floor tile like so, and then we're going to build two triangles to fill in the middle from the main base. On the other side, we're going to build a square floor tile off of the main base, and then triangles off of the wide gaps. The final portion is two triangles off of the main base in between like so. This is what it should look like from above. Next, make your way all the way around with window frames and fill them all with embrasures. At the long sides of the base, you're going to want to place a wall frame off of each inner portion of these triangles and have double doors facing into the wide gaps. This blocks it from being laterable 
and helps us further section off the shooting floor in the event of a raid. Fill out the ceiling, ensuring that every single tile comes off of the main base, not the wide gaps. This will allow us to have heli peaks from the outside of the roof. Once all of that is complete, all that's left is to do the roof battlements. Place quarter walls on every single corner like so. And then roof triangles off of these two triangles here intersecting to create this kind of slope. On the larger wide gap, we're going to place a window frame with stairs leading into it to change our angles and fill it with a horizontal metal embrasure. And we finish it off with two regular roof ramps coming off of the sides of the wide gap here. The only thing left to do from here is create windmill towers if you choose to use windmills for your power. There are multiple configurations and I found that there's some inconsistency with the stability of this build, so you may have to use a different set of frames than what you see on screen here, but this is the example I'm going to use for now. Frames up like so, use netting to climb it if you need to, and then two triangles with the windmill sitting in between them. And that pretty much makes up the base. As with any of my builds, this is just a platform for you to build upon or expand to your liking. There are plenty of additional upgrades you could make should you get rich in your wipe, and plenty of things you could skimp out on if you don't do so well. Once again, I want to give a huge shout out to the TAP team for helping me build this base on stream. It was a crazy stream, I was awake for 42 hours, and I built this in the very last portion of that stretch. As you can imagine, I was deliriously tired when I was designing this space, so it's possible I've made small oversights. If I have, please let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.